Welcome to this episode of Toys Back Zen. I'm your host, John. We're going to be taking a look at the Cobra Hiss 3 tank, released in 2021. I found this at my local Walmart, didn't even know it was released. And as a fan of the vintage Hiss tank, I had to pick it up. Let's take a look at it and see what this thing is all about. I'm sure there is some changes because newer molds throughout the years um, have changed the turret. So we're going to check that out and see if that's the case with this. And uh, we're going to look at the details. Of course, it's the Hiss 3, so it's not black, it's blue. And it also comes with a driver. His name is Rip It. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So this is the Hiss 3. Here's the back of the box. You can take a look at that. Picture of the figure. Let's take a look at the file card. It's in five different languages. His file name is Fred T. Booth III. He is the Hiss driver primary specialty, heavy equipment operator, and his birthplace is Fall River, Massachusetts. Now, he doesn't say much about the file card here. It says, mean and fearless doesn't begin to describe Rip It. This guy knows only one thing, destroy or be destroyed. Now, if you look at the original Rip It figure file card, it says a lot more. On the first version, the rest of the file card reads, and he obviously lives for the former. Generally, one to carry out orders, Rippet sometimes takes matters into his own hands by using the Hiss 3 to wage private battles of his own against G.I. Joe. Oddly enough, as part of his Hiss training, Rippet was required to master the game of golf. Okay, I can't read the rest of that. You go ahead and pause this if you'd like to read it, but it's terrible writing. Let's get into this box and see what we have inside. I'm going to be putting it together, putting the stickers on it, and giving it a review. The original Hiss had a very delicate ratchet system on the turret when it goes up and down. You can see that has been improved greatly uh, with this model. And I think that will last much longer. I'm going to be displaying this mostly and not really playing with it anyway. So I don't think it's going to make a big difference. But you can see in there the ratchet system in the old one. The They had, had almost like toothpick sized pieces of plastic that would break off. You can see here that the molding lines are terrible. There's lots of bad molding lines, not only on the side, but inside the cockpit too. Quite disappointing because the original vehicle was not like this. It does say on the bottom, 2021. And most of the details are quite similar to the original. If we take a look at the tracks, they do have the wheels on the bottom. The tracks don't actually move. And I do like the mud detail on them like it's been in the trenches driving through mud 
So that's kind of a neat paint detail. Let's take a look inside the bag. We have the canopy that does have like a tint to it. We have a figure stand that says rip it on it. And here's the figure. It's kind of got a, a warped leg, probably from the packaging, but also the plastic on this is not the greatest. He does have like a a backpack or, or some kind of chest back piece that goes on. It's not molded on, it's loose, but obviously you can't take it off. Just looking at the articulation here. If you're familiar with a lot of the modern G.I. Joe figures they've made over the years, uh, this is nothing new. The figure is pretty standard, although if you look at his head here, it's hunched over forward. There's probably a reason for that, and I'll get into that later on in this video. But... Uh, I, I just I'm not a fan of this figure, not a fan of the the design. Here's the blueprints. You can see inside the blueprints that it shows you how to put the vehicle together and where to place the stickers. And here is the sticker sheet. And you can see here it has the 813 numbers for the side. Just fits in the front first, slots in. And then we can click the back in, and you'll hear that it's a nice secure fit. The turret goes in, there's three slots that you have to line up with the vehicle body. Once you fit those in, you just turn it and it locks into place, and there you go. I do like the fact that the turret is a black color, which is different than the body itself. The canopy fits in there really, really tight. I mean, I, I guess you want that to be tight so that when you lift it up, it stays up. But I could see that breaking. And there's also a, a slot on the top of the canopy that uh, seems like that could be a weak point for that hinge to break. Not sure why they did that, um, but there's no reason for that, really. Now let's put the figure in there. The figure is a 4-inch figure, which is modern, and this vehicle is was made specifically for a three and three quarter inch figure. So does this figure fit in? If you crunch him in there with his knees bent, he indeed does fit inside the cockpit. And I'm gonna take my version one rip it figure and I'm gonna put that in the turret. Let's get these stickers on. Now I had a problem with the sticker for the front grill. It actually doesn't fit in the space provided. 
So off camera, I'm going to try to get this on and then I'll explain to you how I did it. Very disappointing. So here it is. I just lined the bottom up with the bottom of the opening and then I just use the back of this paintbrush to push it and to set it in there. Now the top of the sticker, I had to stick to the top of the opening and it still sticks out a little bit. Not a fan of that at all. Let's take a look at the side profile of this figure. You notice that his neck is tilted forward. Although I don't like this, I think this is the way that they have made it on purpose so that he would fit into the his tank so that you could close the canopy because he is a taller figure than the original O-ring figures. Let's uh, take a look at the original his tank. We've got three original his tanks here. They're all black. The his tank was originally released in 1983 and 84 and discontinued in 1985. This is the first release that Hasbro did in 84. It has the clear 788 numbers with the red outline. This is my original Hiss driver from my childhood. Love this figure. He's an O-ring figure. I just replaced the O-ring in it because it was quite loose. I'll put them right in there. So that is the first release of the His Tank. Later on in that year, they released this one that the stores picked up. It has the solid 788 in red. Clearly easier to see than the clear one. And you can see here a kid has put the Cobra symbol on the canopy. You know, these things are always a little different every time you buy them because the kids and the parents just kind of put the stickers wherever sometimes and didn't follow the directions. And here's the third Hiss tank that I have here to show you from the original series. And this has the white 788. This was actually a mail away that they did probably in 1984, the second year. You can see here that the guns are broken. The second one that I showed you had a good one. So everything is clearly the same with the molds. We did talk about how the turrets are different, but I'm really disappointed in the mold of this Hiss tank. The ratcheting system on this, I will say, is really awesome. It's really nice. It does turn 360 degrees, so you can kill those GI Joes from all angles. And the canopy is tinted, which I like that change compared to the original ones where they were, where they were clear and they have yellowed over the years. So this tinting may keep the canopy from turning yellow. Here's the original figures. This figure on the left is a, a 2000 Rippet figure, the ver first version that they released. And it's an O-ring figure, the same as my 83 figure. It looks to me like they are the exact same mold, just a different color. Here's another Hiss tank that was released in 2009. I actually picked this up in 2009 at Toys R Us. It was a Toys R Us exclusive. You'll notice at the back it has a white 788, but the hiss on the inside is a white 001. You'll notice that the Cobra hiss here from 2009 
has a figure called the Cobra Hiss Commander, as opposed to Rip It from the Hiss 3, and from the original versions, the Cobra Hiss Driver. If you already have an original Hiss or a Hiss from other years, this is an easy skip for most people. Um, I'm not really a, a, a fan of the figure or the vehicle itself. If they would have done a better job at the vehicle for $40, that would have been nice. But because of the figure, I feel that this is an easy pass just because of the figure is so bad. And uh, that does add to the cost of this vehicle. Thanks for watching this episode of Toys Bag Zen. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell down below. Check out my Instagram. And if you want to ask me a question, you can always leave a comment down below. Take care and have a great day. See ya.